Welcome and thank you for taking your precious time out to join us in this program. And my prayer is that the Lord through His Holy Spirit will minister to you great information, truths. It's not only information, it's truths that will set you free. Thank you very much for taking your precious time out today. And I pray that you will give attention to the word you will learn today. There's a lot of questions that are presented in the world today. And people ask, why am I having this trouble? Is God sending this trouble to me? Is God testing my faith? You will hear answers to a lot of things. And I want to begin this by saying uh, that don't mock God. This is the second part of the message that we've been continuing. And let me read from Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. Galatians 6, 7, it says here, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, that will he reap. Amen. Whatever a man sows, that will he reap. So life is not that when we do a wrong, we think God comes immediately and he starts to judge us. He starts to punish us. Not really. It is breaking the law, the principles of life, breaking the law of, for example, if you break the law of a lie. So, so for example, you lie, you are breaking a law of truth. So when you lie, the risk of you being caught, the punishment associated for lying will come and hit you or come and uh, will meet you. You will come in contact with the truth one day and that lie will be exposed. And then you will be in a situation crying and saying, oh, I didn't mean that. Why is God doing this to me? God is not doing that to you. It's the law of the seed you sowed of a lie. Now truth has come and met you and you don't like the consequence. So th that's mostly what happens. And that's why most people turn around and say, well, God is doing this to me. God is testing me with my health. Not, not really, because if you break the law of health, sickness can result in your body. You didn't know that. Though if you break the law of your thought, if you keep thinking depressing thoughts, keep thinking death and sickness, it will come and hit you. So don't mock God. Whatever you sow, you reap. So we want to learn that. Let's go into the message, get some truth in our lives and let the truth change us. And I'll be back to pray with you. And, and, and I'm going to send you off with a report of faith. Praise God. Again, we're going to continue this uh, subject which is stop mocking God. Tell your neighbor, stop mocking God. <laughs> How do I mock God? Eh? How do I mock God? Like, you know, it's very interesting. Uh, many people mock God. They underestimate God. To mock means, let me give you the definition of mock. To make mouths at, to talk arrogantly, to boast, to scorn, be inflated, Make mouths. Oh, kaa hoi. Hama sange kaa koi chiz kabhi right hoi. Have you heard anybody say that? Don't say it. Don't, don't, don't look around. Just smile. Smile kar ke aage dikhte re na. Koi ne jan pai tumai hai. You know, many times, you know, many times we do mock God. We do make faces. Ki kaa hama sange hoi. Oh, 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 like pastor says, sake tuma sange hoi. Tum believe karo. You know, you saying I'm believing, but all the time you've been believing, nothing has been working for you. But why is that happening? Because the God I know and the Bible I read says, you ask, you will receive. Amen. When you seek him, you will find. And not only did he say that only, he goes about saying it again by saying, whosoever asks, receives. Whosoever seeks will find. Now, why didn't I find? Why didn't I, I ask? God didn't come through. Let me tell you a very wonderful revelation that most time people or pastors don't tell you. It's not your prayer that God answers. It's His word that He gave you that you believe and pray that He answers the prayers. For example, if I did not promise you $10, if you ask me $10 and say, no, you said you'll give me $10. And I did not say I'll give you $10. You can't force me to give you $10 by force. 
हम फास्ट करेगा ब्रदर ब्राइन के डेक फ्री टेन डॉलर यू कैन फास्ट इफ आई डिड नॉट से बोले टेन डॉलर सके दे इवन नो आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू डू दैट बिकॉज गॉड टॉट अस समथिंग व्हेन यू बिलीव एंड आस्क व्हाट ही प्रॉमिस्ड दैट्स व्हाट ही फुलफिल्स ही डस नॉट फुलफिल व्हाट यू वांट वो तो जिद जिद बाजी हो जी ना जो जिद जिद करे मिल जी थैंक यू वेरी मच How many of you understand it? I know it surprises us because we thought we can pray anything, say anything to God, and He's going to just run it and say, "Lo, lo, tum ali, no, 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 lo, lo, baba, nay, don't cry, baba. Yeah, take and eat this. God is not spooning, spoon feeding babies, okay? He is a God. He sits on the throne. He created the universe. And let me tell you something: if He chose not to love you, He is right in not loving us. See, you don't hear this from the pulpit. From the church, you always hear, "God loves everybody." Yes, He does. But why doesn't He help everybody? Because He is a God who walks by principles. You can't be breaking principles and expecting good results. You can't be sowing lemons and expecting nice, wonderful apples. जर्नी <laughs> There is a journey to receiving back everything you messed up. Amen. Oi, I'm not such a god. It's not tough, eh? He's not tough. He's a father, but he's a father of principles. See, that's why I said God does not answer every. This is the most people say. Kuch bhi mango mili. Arey, kuch bhi mango. You don't understand what people can ask. You, I told you what's what people can ask. They can ask anything. Hey, they can ask the richest man's bank balance. I'm making that twenty thousand dollars. I'll be in my bank, man. Why? Because I'm at twenty thousand dollars. Get cheat card. See, people can have anything. If you want to ask anything, you will probably ask things that are not legal. You think you won't ask? <laughs> yes only god knows your brains and what's going in your thoughts people can if god said you whatever you ask i'll give it to you who will have an aki you know what that is everything will go wild that's why for every liberty man experience there must be boundaries how many of you learning that for every freedom that god has provided he gives boundaries you know what his boundaries It's just like this. If you have animals, and I, people hold town people, I think, you know, when you go and see animals, when they have lambs, they have chickens. Actually, chickens don't go too far, but when you have lambs and bullocks, they actually keep eating and keep going. They don't have direction, and especially when it comes to sheep, sheep just keep eating, uh, eating grass, and one if one is leading, everyone is following, and they can go away to another farm and another place, and somebody can catch and. Let me chop it. Okay, but you understand what I'm saying, right? It's you know in the in the villages used to happen when somebody's chicken comes. Why did your chicken come in my area, right? That's the night we're going to have chicken soup. Not our chicken soup. That neighbor's chicken soup, out there. Okay. The same way, many times, we want freedom in Christ, but no boundaries. We want to use all our money the way it's my money. To apa isa thore? I will use it. I will abuse it. It's up to me. Don't tell me I have to do budget. Don't tell me I have to save. This is not going to happen. This is my money, my pleasure. My body, my pleasure. Okay, the saying seems to be right in your eyes, 
but it's not yours only. There is responsibility also. With every power comes, like great power comes great responsibility, you heard? But it's just for saying, nowadays a lot of people just have great power they want. They don't want the responsibility. <clears throat> it's a beautiful sermon today. Hallelujah. Wow, brother, brother, I like that sermon. Actually, it's giving you answers in life. See, God made a free man in the Garden of Eden, didn't he? he? He made Adam. He was free to do anything he wanted to do. But God said, in order to know you have freedom and to enjoy that, I am going to give you something you will be responsible for. Every freedom has a boundary. That is missing in a message called grace today. A lot of pastors are preaching grace to the extreme that there is no, if there is boundary, then we are under the law. Who told you that garbage? Oh, I heard it from a very big pastor, but did you hear it from God's word? <clears throat> come on now, let's come back. I'm going to give you the version of from Brother Paul in the book of Romans. He, Paul wrote the Bible. You know, we believers who are believers of Christ, we are supposed to be light in a world that is dark. We are supposed to be examples because let me tell you, after you die, somebody is looking up to you. Somebody is looking up to you how life's supposed to be. And you are an example to somebody. But you say, but there's nobody, I don't have children. But somebody is looking up to you. Either you are a good example or a bad example. I'm going to say, what is that? Good apple, bad apple. What apple are you? I'm the iPhone apple. Okay, <laughs> let's go on. <laughs> but do you get the message? People are watching you. Well, how many you see? Look, if you if you're not married, your husband might not be looking at you. You you you, you if you if you're not married, your your wife might not be looking at you. But your parents are looking at you. Your friends are looking at you. Your church members are looking at you. The outside world is looking at you. Your boss is looking at you. Your sister is looking at you. Your brother is looking at you. Somebody is looking at you. Right now, I am looking at you. <laughs> How many of you see that? Okay, let's go on with the word of God. Because I want us to come to a place where we, we have come to a place where we don't want, uh, we want freedom without any boundaries. So you go into some other uncharted territory and now you want to claim that. You know, there was a time when people just claim other people's property. Oh, God said, anyway, I just stand up. That's my property. So they, they are lazy. They are non-workers. They just like, you know, when you don't walk, you don't love to, you know, how many of you know, book, anybody read book of Proverbs here? Like once a long time ago, anybody read that? How many of you have been reading it on a consistent basis? You know, people who, who love principles, who love wisdom, read Proverbs. <clears throat> Can I say that again? I will still say it whether you like it or not. The people who love wisdom read Proverbs consistently. Why? It reminds them what are the laws of life. Laws of, of, of character, laws of funds. And one of the most important thing is this. God calls two people to attention. One is faithful or righteous and one is wicked and unrighteous. Have you noticed? One thing? Yeah. Okay. And did you know every time God calls the faithful a diligent person and always favored with good things because he is a person who is industrious. That's a big word, eh? I make it short. He's a walker who's doing something. And he's doing his character with, with heart. The other is Modemanda. <laughs> How many of you got that? Life is beautiful. Underneath the coconut tree. Drinking coconut. That's the nut that needs some. <laughs> okay. So what happens is, what, what is he saying there? He's saying... You don't see blessing because this person does not apply principles of labor. God has given us laws. If you do not use those laws, the laws will not work for you. It will work against you. So, you want wisdom? Go get some wisdom. It's in the book of Proverbs. 
विजडम ऑफ फाइनेंस विजडम ऑफ टेकिंग समबडी सिक्योरिटी ए हमारा हमारे लिए सिक्योरिटी कर दो तुम साइन कर दो एंड वी वी डोंट नो दैट ओ हम हम चीने हां आई कैन सिक्योर सिक्योर एंड व्हेन समथिंग रॉन्ग हैपेंस टू दैट गाय यू आर रिस्पांसिबल टू पे दैट Did you ever know you need to take twice understanding of taking security of somebody and Bible says unless it's your own family remember like from your own house that's different because that's your family I'm talking about somebody else security how can you guarantee somebody will be who they are right now 2 years later that was for somebody <laughs> you know I really believe because many times we take our signature and think that is nothing let me just sign it watch out You are putting yourself in a trap. Not the marriage signature. Eh? <laughs> I mean, if you understand, now we will sign this paper. That one is life. That, that is good too. That is that is a commitment you got into. <laughs> and everybody goes like this praise the lord clap clap everybody everybody's clapping praise the lord after that there is no freedom you got into it it was a choice whatever you made whether blind because love is blind eh you made it blindly you eyes about to open as soon as marriage happens your eyes opens then you say who are you oh i just got no more makeup that's why i couldn't recognize you but okay <laughs> next point the importance is god is saying to us today you better know wisdom everybody wants freedom aap log jante hain there is there is a push today by the world you are free to choose let me tell you you are not if you believe in jesus you are not free to choose you pray and god helps you choose It's a problem. They you know the, the democratic mindset, the whole world liberty, freedom. We want freedom, we want freedom. Every nation wanted freedom, they are free now. And guess what came in? Corruption. Every country because there's something about leadership in God's kingdom. It is where God is your father and he knows the best and he makes happen the best for you. When we become free we become responsible for our own mistake then i am asking a question when you make your own mistakes and then why is it when you you know you have just supposed to take care of your body you abuse your body with food wrong food that you should not eat you find the easiest way of just frying food and frying yourself up yes half your body well i don't smoke but you eat oil that is smoked have you ever smelt Oil. Did you know when you burn oil, certain oils don't hold temperature; they start dying, burning. They they actually change their chemical system. Do they make you know chemical? Do they change their structure? Yes, they do. They can actually become poisonous to certain parts of your body. She she knows she didn't advertise that. We will make her advertising agent now for oil. No, but what you are saying is no. We we. we need to, no i'm what i'm saying is you saying you're talking health i'm not talking health i'm taking bible because everything that happens people nowadays blame god they eat what they want to eat they live like they want to live they think what they want to think they they, they abuse their finances the way and they say look kai ma sang itna broke time chale i don't know why am i having so much sickness in my body no there are certain sickness listen to me there are certain sicknesses not your fault okay so i said there are some things that you didn't bring it on you it's just part of some some things in your body that you couldn't take control i'm not talking about that i'm talking about some things that you had control over like 75% of sicknesses 75 plus percent of sicknesses are man made not natural but 100% of financial problems are man made <laughs> Did you think that was coming? Eh? I'll say that again. Probably seventy-five pastor, seventy-five percent of health problems are man-made. Seventy-five. So it is give and take, right? There, thirty, twenty-five. But did you know financial trouble is hundred percent your problem? Silent day. It's a Sunday. Did you know that financial problems are man-made, not God-made? Huh? 
Păi, pastor precăre, am mai legat my life me curse. There's a curse in my life. I can't save any money. This bus. Dam, dam. Nu, este genda de halu, de a cui pisa de bate. Genda futa cori nu e de bate. You know the old saying, futa cori bine. Dam, finis. Who? Păi, am mai legat the devil. The devil, pastor. It's the devil. I know it's the curse of the devil. It's the devil behind it. Yes, I know the big curse is you. Who had the purse? Me. Who get the uh, wages in the bank? Me. Who went to spend with the cut? Me. Then where did the devil and God come in there? Is it coming back to Sucha? Because it's so easy to blame the wife and blame the children and blame but you know especially if it's a man, men never take the blame. They give it to the wife. You handle the blame. But then if it's the wife, it's the man or the children, let me tell you. You Look at yourself in the mirror today. You are the blame. You are in control. Did you know? You, everyone who dies dies to themselves. Oh, when I die, I'll make sure I go with my wife. You can't do that. You know, some few people I know they did that. They first killed the wife, then they killed themselves. I'm not talking about that. That's murder. You go to jail for that. You know what I'm saying is. For you, how, okay, let me put it easier. This dangerous thing to go to. How many of you eat for somebody else? हम अपन wife के लिए खाना खाता, उसके पेट भर जाए. How many of you do that? Can you do that? No, right? So if you can't do the basic things that way, why is it that in the big things of life like health problems or or or, or bill, I have seen. You know, you know, if you were a child and growing up in my era, and then there used to be like this when the bill, uh, bill, uh, like the the electricity bill used to go up, then you know the fathers and how come the bill? But the butai ka kab? No, but you know, and you ever had that? Itna dear bill again. From today, shut off everything. And I'm no both bill. Anybody ever see that? The putai is a. I was in that era. I know your fathers. I have to pay this. Stop everything. Stop watching the TV this long and everything. Then after one week, back to normal. Then at the month end, fear bill again. The same episode. Then and finish. Then fear way that comes up with again. Fear. Anybody been there? I've been there. But you want to put a stop to that? It's your choice. Nobody is making you. Not even the devil. The devil can't come in your life automatically. Did you know that? No demon can stop your life from being flourishing and fruitful. If you apply the principles, the principles are either killing you or making you. That's why I started with the question: Is it is it God who is judging sin the moment you commit it, or the laws of sin judging you when you commit it? How many people just understood what we said? It's very powerful. Think about that. Okay, let's get into the word now and read certain scriptures. <coughs> So there is this thing going on nowadays. Ah, we under grace, and and there is an amazing and wonderful, uh, I would call, transition of the church community from being the light to being the world. Now they copy everything the world is doing. That's how we will reach the world. So here is the a, a proper understanding of what is relevant. See, when we go out to preach to the unsaved world about the goodness and the love of Jesus. We probably can't go with a tie and a suit. You know why? They will say it's a church service. But when we go out to the world, we probably might just wear a shirt, right, or a tie. But we go there properly attired and preach to them. And probably the team will wear a, a t-shirt or have something on, on that manner. And we sing nice songs and we probably have lights to attract the young children. You understand? But they are unsaved. We are not preaching to the saved. We're preaching to the unsaved. So we go to their area. We 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 change a little bit, but the message and the the foundation doesn't change. But when you come to the church, inside the church, who is getting saved here? I mean, there might be a couple of them. Why is it that when we do outside, we have to bring inside? See, it doesn't make relevance, no? You can't be wearing like what you wore there because your subjects the the the. People you're ministering to has changed. Why do we need the lights off? We have families here, children here. We don't. You say, what has that to do with me? That because 
My question was, and this is what the Lord said, has the message of grace made the life of people much holier or have they taken the liberties that grace provided, that Christ provided and started living a loose life? They don't give now because, well, God doesn't judge me because I don't give, but that's why your money is in trouble because you're breaking the law of seed time and harvest. How many of you with me? Oh, I can, I can abuse my wife, my children, my family, and God understand that I'm forgiveness, I'm communion, and everything will be all right. No, everything will be all right. You're going to have a whole week of trouble at home. I'm going to have the attitude, I am, I'm both strict. I have bad attitude. Yes, that attitude is bringing you down from the altitude you were once in. I'm going to mistreat my mother-in-law because she mistreats me. I'm going to have rough time on my children because I have been abused by my dad. Oh, I'm not going to be nice to my boss because they don't pay me every hour. No, you can't do that. You contracted to work that way and you work faithfully as to the Lord, not to your boss. Amen. See, let me tell you, it's the faithful who get blessed. Amen. Isn't it? <clears throat> A photocopy, a photocopy, all my work, yeah. Did you ask? No, 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 a photocopy. You know, I remember there was a, I won't tell you who it was, but there was this Christian lady who is working in a very uh, prominent place or position in a government ministry. And, all, and, and they, that family had a church and everything was photocopied from the, from the office, the church song sheet, the messages, everything. And then one day she realized we were talking and I said, this is wrong. This is not how it's supposed to be. We are believers. We have to at least ask them and if the permission is given or you pay for that. I mean, if you understand that. And then the permission was asked and then the permission was given and then you feel free that you are doing the right thing. You don't become like, abuse. No, you can't. Because that person is not the judge. The laws of sin and death are still working today. Amen. Because the Bible says, for Christ has freed me from the law. There's a principle. There is a machinery going on. Christ has freed me from the law of sin and death and brought me into the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. But every time you disobey God's word, you come back to that law of sin and death. Because sin and death hasn't stopped working. Okay. Okay, so let me quickly come here. We're going to read some scriptures and we're going to do it together. We're going to answer the question, can I keep sinning that grace may abound? Because this is part of that same uh, scripture, okay? This is very interesting. It's going to get very interesting. Tell your neighbor, it's going to get interesting now. Because there is this thought now that we can be living as we want and God will take me to heaven. No matter what I do, I I'm, I'm, have no responsibility for this. Let me warn you today and those listening. There is a penalty for everything you do in your body. Because you sin with the body, not with your spirit. You take your spirit with it. Okay, let me explain. So when we are ministering to the word, right? So when you are not saved, this was the message. Okay, listen very carefully. Tell your neighbor, listen. When you are not saved, then what would happen is, when you, whatever sin you did, say whatever sin I did, no matter how I live my life, no matter what mess I was in, God forgave me. And that's the message we preach. Whatever you, you are in sin in, no matter what you have done this far, come to Jesus. He will forgive you. He will cleanse you and make you whole. No matter how far you've gone from God, He will still bring you back. Okay? That's, that's the message, right? But now you have been saved. Now you have become the righteousness. Now you have eternal security. Then why would you, having the spirit that is going to go to heaven, is there... A need for repentance. That's what I'm asking today. Is there a need if I do something and I don't repent, it's okay because I'm forgiven. Yes, you are spiritually, eternally forgiven, but sin in the body will be judged in the body. Hey, come on, are you with me? When you do wrong with your body, you will suffer in the body. Your spirit will 
probably go to heaven unless you reject Jesus. Aap log samasta? What is happening? You can't be, see, so to the world, come to Jesus, no matter what you've done. But when you come now to Christ, He has given you His Holy Spirit. Now He will help you live a life like Jesus. Amen. Amen. How many of you believe that? All right. Now let us go and dissect this more. All right, let's go on. Let's go to the book of Titus chapter 2, verse 11. Uh, no, no, Titus Bodure. How many of you remember we read, uh, okay, let's go to 2 Samuel. I don't think we'll finish this today. Do you? <laughs> you say, I don't know the scriptures you have. 2 Samuel chapter 12, <clears throat> and then here is uh, Nathan, our David, and he tells him that uh, what did David do? David actually took Bathsheba, the wife. Uh, how many of you remember the whole story, right? So Bathsheba uh, was there, Uriah's wife, and, and uh, David saw her and he lusted after her. And he said, I want that woman, but there's the man he's married. So he takes the man, puts him in, the, because he was the king, he puts him in the uh, thick of the battle and Uriah dies. And he, he, he makes a, oh, Uriah died. And all the plan was done by David. David planned out his death. So, but you know, David, we read the book of Psalms now. Who David, I want to be like David. <laughs> Do you? David was the dangerous person too. But you know, he had a heart that most believers today don't have. He repented. He, when he did wrong, he said, yes, I have. And I will make changes to this thing. You understand that? He was humble to take the changes. So he had killed and the man of God comes and says, talks about an analogy of a, gives an example of a, a, a lamp, somebody taking. And, and he said, who is this person who has ever done this in my kingdom? Taking somebody else's thing and makes it his own. And he said, it's you, David. You take, took Uriah as wife and you killed Uriah. And this is what God says. See, you have repented. It's written there. Go and read it at home. He said, you repented. I've forgiven you. But one thing will not leave your life and your house. Sword will be in your house. You've sowed a, a very bad thing and it's going to stay with you. You know marks? You know what is mark? Any lady know when you're cutting baji and you cut your finger or your hand somewhere? I'm not talking about boys and girls cutting here. I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> you know, you should take that, that cut Take a slap and slap yourself. Give yourself a good blessing on your side. Make sure it is red. <laughs> that stupidity and those watching, stupidity, nothing else than fun. It's bad. I mean, why you want to cut yourself? Then all your life you'll have a mark there. No sabun will take it away, okay? No oil or cream. Hard jam. I like tattoo. You make a tattoo, it's there. I'm not against that, but I'm not for it either. Well, many, uh, no, uh, wait, I, did I such a very sensitive topic here? <laughs> well, if you did not know, it was okay till then. But now since you know, keep your body clean. Did you know actually the Old Testament goes against? <clears throat> of course, yes. Do you know any meaning behind that? You go and ask a good general practitioner, probably in the church we have a couple. You ask them, it's not good. But no, it will take away the bed and my muscle will be healed. Ask God for healing. The tattoo doesn't heal. God's word heals every time. Oh, my friend has one. I seen the movie actors write their name. What if they, they're the worst part about movie actors is they write somebody's name, tomorrow they're with somebody else. What happens to that? They have the money to make the air, whatever they do. Laser, I heard somebody told me they can laser it out. They got the money. Do you? The person, next person you are. Who is it? Everybody. Who my wife can't but who my wife can't Who gone? Who my ex can't No, I'm not joking about this. is very serious here. And that's why we have you going into the next marriage with the ex. That's why marriages are not working because you got too many exes to chop off the marriage. How many of you got that? Yes, X, X, X. That's why I want to put a Y to that. (laughs) 
How many of you got it? Boy, some people, huh? They, in the night, you'll get it. <laughs> you know, if you have some brains upstairs, life is beautiful where you are. If you're not satisfied, it's your problem. You've been looking around too much. You don't like that either? Too bad. I'm here to tell the truth. Amen. Life is beautiful. How are you seeing life? Oh, but, but, but you know, that's the problem. Stop watching too much movies. Especially love story movies. Especially Bollywood movies. Whoever is watching online, I don't care what you think. Uh, this is my opinion. I need to say it. I'm going to say it. It's not my, actually my opinion. It's biblical opinion. Because every time you see one boy, a main boy, and then, then that main boy with another main girl, and then you see every main girl. They, you know one thing? Do you ever see the old, old uh, celebrity main girls that used to be coming in now, new main girls? No. They become mothers. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm not talking movie. I'm talking principle here. You understand? Why is the movie industry always making sure the boy can be the same, but the girl needs to be young? <laughs> Wake up! It's a trap. Why doesn't the old actresses with the all this come now? Okay? No, they won't come. No, no, wait. You know why they won't come? Because they want to keep, the devil knows that. The, every time a man sees that, every time a woman sees that, that's how I want my marriage. They, see, they keep showing you pre-marriage experiences. They never show, give me what happens in a marriage. Because everybody wants the pre-marriage experience when you are going after the girl. Always wanting to get in love with that girl. Somehow, patailo la girl. And that kind of mentality is still there when you are now married. Let me tell you, marriage is commitment. You are wasting time and money running after something. But thank God you got married at least. Now, let me give you a good walk. Walk within. Walk within that. Keep the boundaries going. And it is going to be flourishing. Amen. So what did David do? David messed up and, and the Lord said this. See, God forgave him. Say, God forgave him. God will forgive every one of your sins. But one thing will happen. The consequence of the, the memories, the seeds you've sown, you can't get away from that. It will still remain. Like the mark. The mark on Chibira. Oh, yeah, the, that day we were doing barbecue and we were making, cutting the onions. Boy, I... See, you remember, na? The same way is the stain of sin. You remember. Somebody else remembers. But, thanks be to God, we are in Christ Jesus. He forgives us and forgets, but He will give us the grace to forgive and forget. Are you with me? Are you going to do that? You know, the greatest thing in life is to be able to forgive somebody. I'll say that again. The greatest blessing a believer can have is to forgive somebody and heartily forgive it without saying last time. Because last time is a continuous present tense to most people. Every present time, they bring the last time. It's time to forget the last time. Amen? So what did God say? Verse 13, I'm reading from verse 13 to 15. Okay, then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, the Lord has put away your sin. You shall not die. However, because this deed, you have given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. You understand what happened? Every time a believer sins, you give the devil a great opportunity to blaspheme the name of Jesus. Have you ever seen this thing? Oh, it's amazing. Every time somebody does something, they always put the name of the company they're working. Because individually, so they put it this way. A, 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 a newspaper, anything. Eh? A worker of, uh, probably Tapus, a worker of uh, TFL. You, you've seen that? A, a, a minister. They put, they connect you to something. So when I, a person who's just in church, a member of this particular church, a pastor, especially the pastor one, both brothers away. A pastor abused a child. I mean, that's the person. Why you want to? But did you know that's the, how the world sees you? 
Next time, the believer who called himself a Christian has done this. That's the news. The devil makes a big news about you. Are you the news or the news been made? Think about it. Your life should be great news. Your life should be good news. So if it's not, let's change the news. From today, you become the good news. When people take your name, wow, I like that person. Why? I am the good news. I say, no, Anybody have that? There's someone in your family, 100%. Koi na koi garve hai, ya family me hai, jod aate deri. You can tell her, you all are trying to hide it, but it's there, okay? Every family has somebody <laughs> who comes in, you know, I gave a yeah, it's a ninja, it's a story. But, but you know what? that we should know is this, that we are supposed to be creating good news for Christ. Amen? What's your news? Don't become the news, you create the news. That, we, uh, uh, that so and so prayed and they got healed. So and so's life is an example. They were given an opportunity to steal, but they did not steal. They were, this, uh, you know, your, your company in your, wherever you are walking, everybody should know you. Let me tell you, you don't have to talk to be known. Your faithfulness will speak for you. Come on now. Your faithfulness will speak for you. And it does. Amen. Oh, I'm so challenged. There's scripture. Sunega. Pastor, ah, I'm encouraged. Kari, I'm madam. Woo, udega hawa me. Tum bhot hawa me udega bhi. Wait, karo. Pehle zamin me to gold rakhlo na. Fir ude ke baat kare koi. But did you know one thing? I know, I, 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 I did that. I tried that one time. I wore a towel at the back. And I went and I didn't climb to the roof. I was smart. So I went and we had, uh, uh, you know, cement blocks. So I put about this high. I got, let me see, because don't jump too high, na? But I've seen some children can climb up under the flying boot, all the messed up. So I put the blocks, put my father's towel because our towel was small, eh? We small children, the father's towel. All right, I'm going to test. Then Superman. So to the rescue. So I jumped. And I just jumped. Oh, neuda. Next try, because Superman be try katarata bodhis na. Jump, calm down. And I realized there was a lot of doves na. Because there was a lot of pigeons were there. They probably were laughing at me, no? They were flying. I wasn't. But Superman was. <laughs> you know the problem is? You were not made to fly. Did you ever hear this in a message? Never. Listen to me. You were never made to fly. That's why God did not give you wings. How's that for a revelation? Nay believe kare jaku to bare. If you can fly, praise God, we will make you the front page headline tomorrow. God did not make you to fly. There is no genius of God in you making you fly. He wants you to be profitable on earth, on the land, on the feet, on the ground. You prosper well when you are connected to the ground and labor. But the bird doesn't have to. It was made to fly. Ye problem ye both their flight am log sunne laga. I was supposed to fly. I was supposed to fly. अरे भैया पहले जमीन में तो चले सिखलो तब फ्लाय करना तुम कहीं बाहर ऊपर। How many of you getting the idea now? See, in it's in in mentality you need to fly or go beyond your situations. But it does not mean you are always wanting to do impossible without first doing what you are supposed to do. Amen. Are we learning something today? Amen. This is, this is actually church. Church is when you realize how, where you're supposed to be. Church is when you come and, and as a family we realize we are supposed to be making a mark that people will recognize and say, when you die, you have died a good death. 
you should leave behind a legacy people should talk about for years to come. तो पलवार तुम्हें कभी नहीं मांगे भूले बाइबल वैसे बताया जा रहा मेमोरी ऑफ द राइचस मैन द नेम ऑफ द राइचस मैन इज नेवर फॉरगोटन इट रिमेन्स फॉर एवर इज ब्लेस्ड फॉर एवर आदमी जब तुम्हारा नाम ले बोले बॉय आई कैन फॉरगेट दैट पर्सन अमेन हाउ मेनी ऑफ पीस देयर सम पीपल पीपल लोग बोले कब जाए भैया बहुत खड़ा पर्सन है ओके Can I sin and no consequence will come? Go to Romans chapter six. Abhi mang ya class kare, right? And we'll have communion. Romans chapter six, one to two. Trapal li jai na scripture. Romans chapter six. Right, you there? Abhi mang ya sangye pade na Romans chapter six, verse one. What shall we say then? अच्छा अच्छा उससे पहले आप जाने वट 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 मोस्ट टाइम्स ग्रेस प्रीचिंग इज ऑल अबाउट इवन आई प्रीच दैट इफ आई वॉज टू प्रीच ग्रेस आई विल प्रीच फ्रॉम रोमन चैप्टर फाइव डिड यू नो दैट इफ आई वॉज सपोज टू प्रीच ग्रेस आई विल प्रीच इज फ्रॉम रोमन चैप्टर फाइव बट डिड यू नो जस्ट आफ्टर फाइव इन दस दे वॉज नो चैप्टर दे वॉज नो वर्स वन पोल वॉज राइटिंग दिस लेटर So what did he write on? He, he after he wrote that you are freed in Christ, there is no you are made righteous now. <clears throat> verse one, chapter six, verse one. Everybody read two, three. क्या हम कहे इन चीजों के विषय में, right? Shall we continue in? Okay, 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 okay. This sin, understand? What's the first thing I said? When you are an unbeliever, no matter what sin you did, God forgave you. Right? Now you became a son of God, a child of the kingdom, filled with the Holy Spirit. Do you commit the same sin that you committed then? No, the, I'm not talking about the sin. Sin. The sin that you do after you become a believer is this sin. You are supposed to live right, and you don't live right. That's called missing the mark. They, this sin cannot be like I will eternally dig because kafi time in the Bible me pade the word sin is equated everywhere. Sin that you, see, let me tell you, the sin that separated you from God has been solved. You have been reconciled to God. When you become a believer, you can still sin. You know what is that? You are called to do right and you do wrong. That is going off course. Ab log samjha? जाए के रहा तुम में नेंडी चल दिया तुम नसोरी हम इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड दे सो सो यू आर सब यू टोल एवरीबॉडी आई एम गोइंग टू नेंडी आई एम नेंडी जाता नेंडी जाता नेंडी जाता विश्वासी हम बन गए हम नेंडी जाता बट तुम्हें आया वेलकम टू नसोरी काय बिकॉज़ दुई जगह एयरपोर्ट है ना फिर तुम सोचा हम नेंडी जाता हम प्लेन पकड़ के जाता अब सी एंड प्रोबेबली यू माइट हैव बीन बट तुम पहुंच गए सॉरी बड़ा बड़ा हाल ही नहीं दिया दो घंटा नहीं लगा बिकॉज ये शॉर्टकट रहा ना दैट्स व्हाट मोस्ट बिलीवर्स वांट शॉर्टकट दे वांट दे नो दे हैव टू कैच द बिग फ्लाइट दे हैव टू गो टू इंडिया वेल वेल शॉर्टकट है यहां से भी प्लेन पकड़ के चल देगा आई नो सम पीपल आर थिंकिंग दैट वे आइडियाज ना बट व्हाट माय पॉइंट वाज मेनी टाइम्स वी आर सपोज्ड टू लिव अ राइटियस लाइफ बी लिविंग इन फेथ एंड लव एंड जॉय ऑफ द होली गोस्ट बट वी आर लिविंग अ रॉन्ग लाइफ वी नॉट सपोज्ड टू लाई डिड यू नो lying <clears throat> let me tell you right again one time you deceive another when you lie and i ended this last week and i'm going to probably end it with it again you know what is deception dhoka dena say with me dhoka dena to deceive right is to dhoka dena <clears throat> many people mock god this way they say i love you lord but they are lying because in their life they don't love god lord i i will give you 10% as soon as you give me a 10 million dollars oh lord you give me 10000 dollars i give you 10% of that you are lying because you will not give you are not giving 5 dollars now i will give 1000 uh, dollars from there from 10000 how will you give 1000 dollars you can't because if you can't faithfully give the small how can you give the big so don't open your mouth why then tell god that because he notes it down Because God is a God of promise. Did you know that? Did you know that? Don't say to God, "I'll do this," because they're please. All oh, right, I believe you, son. And he writes it down, and you don't do it. 
and that becomes credit against you. Did you know the Bible says that? Jesus said, Tum kasam nahi khana kabhi. Don't vow a vow before God. Don't vow. Did you know why did Jesus say that? Because if you vow a vow in, in, in your excitement in church and you don't do it, it will be held against you until you pay that vow. Did you know that? It overcome again. Listen, hey, there's, a, there's a Hindi word that most people do. Manta manle? Manta lelo? They say, do you take it on you? I'll do this. How, how can you say you'll do it? Just say, Father, by your grace, I receive. The, you, I know you'll do this to me because you said that. And give me the strength so that if I get that, I will do this for your kingdom. But don't vow because if you break your vow before God, it's not good. But one place we commit people to vow. We make sure they vow. Did that happen? Marriage, amen. <laughs> Marriage, may we make sure you stay there and take the vow. I do. My Brian, to its Doreen Co. Most people have no idea. Next time we have counseling, I'll ask Pastor Felix to read out the whole commitment they made. And then say, bye-bye. Yeah, ek tuma kopi, ek tuma kopi, ja kare. Siko, fir se bolo. Because that will solve all your problem. Did you know that? Because you vowed. Kiss me. Suk me. Duk me. Khali khai me. But, nahi me. Amen. Pasta? I may pata nahi, mile ki nahi, but... But it's amazing. Did you know the greatest people one day will before God's presence would be those who have been faithful. Those who say to the world, Goodbye, oh well, I'm no longer going to serve you or love you. I made up my mind. I'm going God's way. God's way. How long? For the rest of my life. Amen. Glory to God. Let me finish. So deception by life. So when you deceive somebody, tum jab jhoot bolta hai, tum koi ke dhoka deta hai. I'm going to say that until you get that. Every time you lie, you deceive someone. That's why most people deceive one another and they also think, God bhi to kaan dekhe, uske bhi jhoot bol do kaan jaan paai. Patrik bhi jhoot bol do u kaan jaan paai. Aurat ke to waise jhoot bolta hai, admik to waise jhoot bolta hai, ladkan bale maai baap ke waise jhoot bolta hai, gamman bale, aur baaki sab kai jhoot bale. Boss jhoot bale. I tell you, I tell you, world leaders, they come like, we're telling the truth, this is this way. I, I don't care who they are. No, there, there, there are three ways. Do you know there are three lies? There are three ways of deception. There's actually more, but the three basic lies. Are, one is you outrightly lie, which is not truth. One is you tell half the truth. I like half and you hide half. That's why the Bible called full. See, whenever you are telling half the truth, you are telling full lie. In God's eyes. Can I say that again? When you're telling half the truth, you in God's eyes, you're telling a full lie. And there's another thing you call spin. You know what is spin? Kali gumao. Kali gumao. Batao nahi. But jhoot bhi nahi bolo. Kali gumao. And I tell you that, that gumao is the big one. Kali gumao. They, they twist you. I, I didn't ask you that. Yes, I know you didn't ask me. But I can't give you a straight answer. I'll be lying. So they gumao. And that one is what politics is, gumao. <laughs> Praise God. You say, you're talking about somebody? I'm talking about the whole world. That's how the world is. See, you people will see a news and say, well, that's the truth. <laughs> Do you know the truth? Have you went and did some study to find out the truth? That you make up your opinion and fighting people? Getting angry on some leader or somebody? See, the world is living in deception under the control of our enemy. He's a liar. So don't become too political and don't become too all-knowing that you hear the news and you make a read a Facebook uh, for post from somewhere and you make up your mind. This is this way. No, don't.
don't do that, go in prayer and ask God what to pray about that. There's a war going on in the whole world and what you do, you make up your mind. This bad, this good, this good, that bad. Who told you? How you know which one is good and which one is bad? Well, welcome back. I believe you went through, a, through the whole sermon with a desire to learn and you did learn something. And let me now pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you for the joy of uh, uh, these wonderful people taking this journey with me in this sermon. And I know they learned the truth. I know that you spoke to them. And sometimes it is hard to take it. And I understand that very well because I was there and I didn't want to repent. And I was frustrated saying, how come? How can it be that it's all my fault? It is, Lord. I pray that they will humble themselves under your mighty hands and repent of their wickedness or sin. And they will return to you. And in prayer and seeking you through your word, they will find you and find victory and find release. In Jesus' name be released. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. There you go. Don't you feel light? Don't you feel? Well, praise God. My mind is light now. I am going to focus on keeping the laws of God. See, you don't want to read bad in life. Then don't sow wrong. Don't sow bad. Uh, for example, as I said in the sermon probably, and in other times I've been say, preaching this in one of these times, you will find that I've said this. If you want friends, be friendly. If you expect love people to love you back, you love. See, what you sow is what you reap. This is a very powerful universal law and it is out there for everybody. And I pray that you get a hold of the message today. I'm not going to mock God. I'm not going to, don't even mock at sin, you know. When you mock at sin and you do wrong and you said, I don't care, whatever will happen, I'll see. No, don't you ever say that because sin once committed or disobedience once committed, the, the result or the penalty of those, the, the consequence of what you've done or sowed is not only just a little bit, it's always exponential. It always is more than what you did. So, so be very careful. Sometimes you can be enjoying a moment of pleasure for a long lifetime of misery that you don't want. So you be very careful of breaking natural laws as a believer of Jesus and reaping the consequence. So let's not go there, okay? But thank you very much for joining with us. I expect and hope to see you next week. And next time, and on the same time, hit this channel preaching to you the good news of the gospel, telling that Jesus is coming and Jesus alone is Lord. And we love you and we pray for you in this ministry and we're expecting the best from you. And I know God has the best for you. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Just keep living the good life that Jesus died to give you. Get your sins forgiven by confessing the sins and live a victorious life. God bless you. Learn more from God's Word and send us your prayer request by visiting our website www.jclm.org or you can like our Facebook page Jesus Christ is Lord Ministries to keep up with the now word of the Lord for the season. Follow us on Instagram JCLM Fiji. Better still, subscribe to our YouTube channel JCLM Fiji to receive the latest teaching of God from the ministry.